Hello, I have gathered you all around here to help me answer the age-old question. What the heck do I read next? I'm sitting on my desk. By the way, it's in front of my bookshelves. We got our bookshelves over here. And we are going to do another plan my reading with me video. Um, because I've come at the point where I'm like, hmm, I think I've read all the books that I like plan to read last time. It's time for a new moment, a new era. <laughs> a new era of reading, if you want to be super dramatic. The thing is that Christmas break is coming up. I have a week off between Christmas and the end of the year. Uh, when this video is going up, it's probably Christmas. The thing is that during Christmas and during Christmas break is like that time of the year where I really feel like just reading a lot. You know, just spending entire days just sitting by the Christmas tree doing nothing, just reading a fun book and getting a lot of reading done. And then when New Year rolls around, I kind of already want to start thinking about what do I want to read next year? Like maybe we can take a look at what I've been reading for the past year, <laughs> what genres I've been reading, what it's been looking like, and based on that kind of think about what I want to do next year. It's kind of a mess in my head because there are so many books that sound fun and there are so many books I see people talk about online and I just want to make it you know, sink it down, sink it down to the essentials. So if you've been here before, you know that this little shelf right here behind the computer um, is my TBR shelf, aka the books that I still have to read, everything else I've read. We'll get to that later, because first, the natural starting point of this video is to do a little book haul, because I actually just receive some new books that I'm super excited about. Um, and we'll just go over those first, okay? Okay, so I haven't bought a book since my last plan with me video, which was in the beginning of September. So I didn't buy a single book for more than two months, but yesterday I received three books. And that is because I had a bookish secret Santa. So, you know, with the secret Santa, you just get a random person from your group and then you buy them a present. Uh, with my student association book club, we did it but bookish where you had to give them a wish list of books you would like, books that you've loved, kind of tropes, things that you like in books, and then based on that, the other person would buy you uh, 25 euros worth of books. And I received three books and I want to share them because I'm so excited this happened yesterday. This is actually the little card that came with the, the presents and I'm really happy with these books. So first I'm just going to share those with you. Just going to come a little closer. Uh, the first book that you got me was one of my wish list. And that is The Midnight Line by Marie Rutkowski. You might know her name because back in the day when YA Dystopian was still a really big thing, she wrote the Winners trilogy with the Winners Curse, I think, being the first one. But she has also written a YA fantasy series. The reason I really wanted this is because it's not getting a lot of hype. Actually, it's barely getting any hype. I think only about 8,000 people have read it on Goodreads, which is really not that much. But the people who have read it seem to be really excited about this. People whose reviews I trust really loved this book. And especially, you know me, you know that I love The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi, which is also one of those YA fantasies that isn't super popular, but I love it. And what I, from what I've seen, people who really love The Gilded Wolves also really like this one. So maybe it's just one of those YA fantasies that just appeals to a certain niche of people that I'm in. And also on the back it says it has been blurbed by Roshin Chokshi, who calls it utterly immersive. So if the author of The Guild of Wolves and people who really like The Guild of Wolves also like this one, I think it's gonna be something for me. I don't know a lot about the plot, I just know that it's a YA fantasy and that there's a romance between two girls and that it's very focused on that romance and that it's supposedly really good, so... Sounds like fun! And then the two books that she got me just based on what I like were absolutely perfect because these are both books that I already wanted to read. First off, um, because I said that I really like Dark Academia, she got me the Secret History by Donna Tartt, the book you guys have been telling me to read for a very long time because obviously 
I like other Dark Academia books. I loved If We Were Villains, I loved Ninth House. This is the OG Dark Academia book and I've been wanting to read it. I just always thought to myself, I'll buy it when I want to read it at that moment. And there's never been a moment where I was like, yes, this month I want to read The Secret History. So I hadn't bought it yet, but I'm still really happy with this because now I just have it. And whenever the urge for me to read this book strikes, I don't have to first go out and buy it. I just already have it on my shelf. It's deceptively small. It looks very thin in comparison to this book, which is only 350 pages. They look almost the same size, but this is 600 pages. They're just like really thin pages. Sorry, I have to fix the lighting situation for a second. But if I had to describe this book in one sentence, from what I know, it's just um, a crime book about a bunch of pretentious students that kill another student. And I have to deal with the consequences of that. And then the third book she got me because in my list of favorite books of all time, I put The Night Circus. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. So she got me The Starless Sea, also by Erin Morgenstern. This is, as far as I know, her only other book. So pretty with like the shiny bee. And this is a book about books, a book about stories like an ode to stories. A lot of people have said it was super confusing, um, but all that says to me is that it's probably going to be very dreamlike just taking you on a trip. And I'm really into that and I just want to read more of Erin Morgenstern. Three fantastically chosen books. They also look super pretty together. Like the colors. So yesterday when I got these books, I was immediately like, oh boy, what book am I gonna read first? And is there not maybe do I want to read one of these or is there a book on my TBR pile that I want to read first? I don't know how I'm going to decide. <laughs> so these are going to be up for the running and this morning I decided to kind of sneak a peek and read the first page. All of these books kind of give me some extra insight and this one started off really interesting. You immediately are told um, about this student that is being killed um, by the narrator. And the Star of the Sea immediately started out very vague, but like in the best way possible, where you just follow a basement with a pirate that is being fed by a girl every night. And that's it. <laughs> and this one, very YA fashion. It, it's been a while since I read a YA fantasy, but we're just immediately thrown into this world where, you know, different classes of people and the main character belongs to the lower class where everything is a lot worse than in the upper class. Now I think the next step is to just take out all my TBR books and take a look at which ones I want to read and then also think about books that I maybe want to buy. What I usually do and that is just take off everything from the TBR pile and then put back what I'm not currently interested in and then what I am interested in I usually put beside my bed. Usually I also have like a little pile of books beside my bed that we can go through for these kind of videos but I've actually gone through all the books beside my bed like I really I need to I need to make a new pile for next to my bed. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> That's just half of it. <laughs> Bunch of books. Look. Bunch of books. So what is my life situation at the moment? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I put way too much effort into choosing the next book that I'm going to read, but I, I, just, I like doing it, okay? <laughs> it brings me joy. <laughs> so for the summer break, the summer break, no, the Christmas break, which is summer break for some people, but for me it's winter break. I kind of just want to read a bunch of like quick to read books. That's what I'm really in the mood for. I don't want to start a really big book right now that I'll probably be reading until the end of the year, you know? Uh, I really want to read some stuff that I can really get through quite quickly. And then after my Christmas break, I'm still doing my internship. I'm doing a neuroscience internship with a Harvard research group from home. Um, so I'll be doing that every day from nine to five and I'll be pretty busy with that like mentally as well. There's just like a lot of analysis going on, a lot of intellectual stuff. So in my free time, I just like to take it a little easier and just have something that can just really like sweep me away, you know? Um, so I'm gonna be honest and I'm just gonna say no 
to the classics for now. I just know that that's not something that I'm gonna really enjoy at this moment. So <sighs> at this point, it's kind of become a joke on this channel. But yeah, crime and punishment. It's just not the right time. <laughs> it's not that I don't like it. I do. It's just hard to get through and I want something. Oh, pretty bookmark. Wow. Oh my gosh. A book that I actually have a bookmark in? What is this? Who am I? <laughs> That's a rare sight. <laughs> so I am actually quite far into this already. This part, I'm almost halfway. It's just not for me right now. I did read at the back of The Secret History. It is blurbed as, as having the plot of Crime and Punishment. I think it's because this is also about someone who kills someone and then for the rest of the book has to kind of psychologically deal with the consequences. So I guess The Secret History is about that as well. Maybe if I read The Secret History, then after that, I'm gonna be really in the mood for this book. Maybe these books need to be re read together and like one after another, maybe. That's interesting. Not for now, because like I said, I don't wanna start like a really big book and this is 600 pages. So it's not really end of the year reading for me, but that is actually a good plan for the new year, like next year. I might read these back to back. Maybe it could be a video, who knows? Interesting insight. Um, but yeah, the classics are not gonna happen. So um, same thing for Jane Eyre and Pride and Prejudice. Just not something that I'm... Oh, look at the colors. Whoa. Purple? Orange? <laughs> not really in the mood for these at the moment. Um, then we have a bunch of books that I name every single time and that I should probably just get rid of and that is night film <laughs> yet again I decided to maybe want to try this for Halloween because it's like a big thriller and yes again I found myself just not being interested in this book so I think I'm just gonna keep this one aside for when I have another book swap like once in a while I have a book swap with the same group of people that I did The Secret Santa with where everyone just takes books that they're no longer interested in and then you can just give them to each other. Consider this one unhauled. It just depends on when I'll be able to have a book swap and actually give it to someone else but I don't think I'm gonna be reading this one. I think I have an idea for all the remaining books that are on here which is kind of a lot. I am going to consult my reading journal where I keep track of my reading and all the genres and all that stuff and just kind of take a look at what my past year looked like and then maybe based on that we can decide which books we want to buy and which of these books I want to read. So let me, let me grab that. So to be fair, um, I didn't really use my reading journal that much this year. Uh, the only page that I did want to keep track of is just the main page of all the books that I've been reading and like their genres, etc. So this main page, all of the books that I've read and then their genres. So what really struck me this year is that I've been reading a lot of romance, which is something I don't usually... It's, it's a genre that I never really read a lot of. But I've been really enjoying adult romance books. Then of course I read a lot of fantasy but not as much as usual. I tend to read more fantasy but I haven't been reading that many as you can see. This is the fantasy. Usually it's like so much bigger than the other ones but now it's kind of on par with for example romance. And this year I really I only read two classics. Yeah next year I definitely really want to oh. Next year, I really want to start prioritizing these. I know that if you watched my previous plan, my reading with me videos, I've not been prioritizing these at all. I'm gonna say next year. And I'm holding up the secret history as if it's a classic. It's, it's a dark academia classic, but it's not a classic. These three. I want to try to get to read these next year, preferably in the first half. We'll, we'll see if we can do that. And I also only read three nonfiction books. Which is also not a lot for me because in 2020 I've been really loving nonfiction and I usually read quite some nonfiction, but this year hasn't really been happening. So I might want to get on that as well. It's probably because I started studying again, which means that you're practically reading nonfiction every day because you're learning things. And then I don't really feel like reading more nonfiction in my free time, but 
I do think it's something that I want to read more of. So let's take a look at what we have. So I still have this pretty dense um, nonfiction book about artificial intelligence. It really reads like it could be an actual textbook. Like it really is pretty dense. Not something that I think I'm going to enjoy reading while I'm also reading dense articles about neuroscience during the week. So this is super interesting, but it'll be for another time. One that I might actually get to, this might actually be really interesting to take a look at during the Christmas break. I still have Symposium and the Death of Socrates by Plato. This is a very short piece of philosophy written down by Plato. It's supposedly quite easy to read and it's only like 200 pages, but the Symposium is the famous, it's not really a story, but like the, the tale. <laughs> of a group of Athenian aristocrats that attend a party and at that party they talk about all sorts of topics that Plato uses to, you know, kind of explore these philosophical ideas, including love. They talk a lot about love and then the death of Socrates. I think this is going to, because if you remember, like Socrates was actually trialed and killed. This contains the apology. It's his speech that he gave um, in his own defense. And this is also supposedly really interesting and Plato wrote all of that down. And I really want to read that. I've kind of been neglecting any philosophical things lately, but I do find it very interesting. And this one shouldn't be too hard to read and it's quite short. So I think I might, okay, I'm gonna try to get to at least a little bit of this one during my Christmas break. You know, the perfect Christmas time, just sitting under the Christmas tree, reading Plato. <laughs> I think the people from The Secret History would approve. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this one. And something that I really want to read again is YA fantasy, because I didn't read a single YA fantasy this year. No, I only reread Shadow and Bone, so that doesn't really count. Oh, and I also reread Six of Crows, so that also doesn't really count because these are books I already know I enjoy. I started reading Into the Crooked Place by Alexandra Cristo. Uh, if you remember that, but I didn't finish it because I couldn't get into it at all. But I really want to read a bunch of YA fantasy. So that would be The Midnight Lie. And then maybe I will finally give a try to Fable. Uh, which has been on my shelf for such a long time. This is the Fairy Loot edition. If you can see, it has glittery edges as well. It's a piratey fantasy and I started reading the first 15 pages at some point and didn't really like it, but everyone keeps recommending to me because I always say that I love pirates and this is a piratey fantasy. And I know that it is pretty popular. So maybe I should just give it a try. And if I don't like it after 50 pages, I can always just decide to not finish it. But then at least I've really given it a try. And there are quite a lot of other YA fantasies that I am very interested in that maybe we should just buy. <laughs> Hello, I completely forgot to mention something because sometimes I just completely forget that I'm also listening to audiobooks. <laughs> like I'll go a few weeks without listening to any audiobooks and then just completely forget that I was in the middle of a few. <laughs> For example, right now, <laughs> I really want to finish before the end of the year the audiobook for The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. <laughs> I've been listening to this one for quite a while on and off again because I just keep forgetting about it, but I am really enjoying it. It's a science fiction novel that posits two worlds against each other. One that is kind of like our world, very capitalistic, and then another world that is in a sense very anarchistic in a way that everything is like publicly owned and there are no hierarchical structures, etc. Mostly it's one of those science fiction books that doesn't really have a lot of plot. It's mostly just a vehicle to explore all kinds of ideas and it's super interesting and I really want to continue listening to it. Even though I constantly forget that I'm reading it, that doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it. I am. <laughs> I just need to finish it. So I just want to mention that one here. That one is also currently on my TBR, like the books that I plan on reading soon. It feels kind of weird that after I've just received three books, to just be like, you know what I need? New books. I need to buy more books. But the thing is, I made like a little wish list of books that I really wanted for The Secret Santa. So all that time I didn't buy those books because of course 
I might get them from the Secret Santa. And well, I did get this one, but a few of those other books, actually one in particular, I've just kept hearing fantastic things about and I didn't buy it because, you know, I might get it for the Secret Santa, but I didn't. So now maybe I should just buy it for myself. <laughs> And I'm specifically talking about Iron Widow. I know that it includes like Mecha, so like Mechatronics, which sounds super cool. It is described as <laughs> the main characters of Pilot, that Pilot's giant transforming robots that can battle the Mecha aliens that <laughs> lurk beyond the Great Wall. That sounds fantastic oh my god the problem is and i remember why i hadn't bought this book yet because i looked for it in bookstores i cannot find this anywhere like i just can't buy it anywhere like it's unavailable and the other book that i really want to buy that i tend to read the series that i tend to read over christmas is the bronze beasts which is the third book uh, the final book in the the guild of wolves trilogy that i i love the trilogy so much and I, again, can't find the paperback anywhere. Or it's like really expensive. I'm really sad about this. And I know the paperback for Iron Widow exists because I've seen it in a bookstore about like months ago. And then I didn't buy it because I hadn't heard about it yet. And I should have just bought it then, but I didn't. Let's see if online bookstores might have it. Hi, sorry, the camera just ran out of battery. So it's now a little while later, so it's already getting dark. I'm sorry for the lighting, but in the meantime, <laughs> I started looking up some more, if I could find these books anywhere. And <laughs> I need to give some little, a little bit of background information. So today, as I'm filming this, it is a Sunday. I actually planned on meeting with Sabine in the city where she lives, so we could go to the bookstore together. And I, we were both super excited to go, but unfortunately yesterday evening, we heard that the Netherlands is going into full lockdown again until like into the new year. So we couldn't go to the bookstore because they would all be closed. And now <laughs> I am looking online where I could find the Iron Widow and I can't find it anywhere. It is not available in any bookstores. The only bookstore in the Netherlands that actually has this book right now is the exact bookstore <laughs> that Sabine and I planned on going to. So if we actually went today, I would have been able to buy it. So I'm afraid my dream of buying a bunch of YA fantasy books to read during the Christmas break is kind of falling apart right now. Um, but I might just buy The Bronzed Beasts because it's actually available to buy from a bookstore. It's only 13 euros, so that could be like a small little Christmas present to myself, maybe? I'm just gonna order it because I really love the Guild of Wolves and I really want to read it. And if I order it now, it'll be there after Christmas, but still during like the Christmas uh, holiday. Okay, I ordered it. Hello, sorry. I'm checking back in the next day because it just got way too dark, but I just still want to show you which books I decided to take with me when I go back to my parents over the Christmas holiday. Kind of a a definitive summary of what we've discussed today. So first I'm gonna take with me The Midnight Lie, of course, and then also Plato's Symposium for in case I wanna switch it up with the reading. Um, and then I would love to start reading The Bronze Beast, but in case The Bronze Beast doesn't arrive at all or not on time because, you know, it's just like really busy with delivery around Christmas. So I just wanted to take another book with me as well, just in case this is gonna be the only thing I have with me for Christmas, so I decided to also take The Starless Sea because I feel like this book is gonna be the most kind of magical, wintry, and I kind of feel that vibe during, you know, the midst of winter and around Christmas time, New Year's Eve. And I think with that, because the Bronze Beast will definitely arrive at some point, I have enough to keep me busy for at least a month. So <laughs> these are the books I'll be taking with me again. <laughs> they match really nicely in color. I'm very excited to just start reading all these books and sitting by the Christmas tree and just having leftover Christmas food and little pastries and nice little, little, little the tiny little appetizer dishes you always make around Christmas time, you know? I'm kind of in that cozy fantasy vibe right now, you know? Let me know what mood of reading you are in right now, books you want to read in the upcoming month or months. 
I really hope you enjoyed this planning video. If you want to see more bookish content from me, we talk about books on this channel all the time. You can subscribe if you want to or follow me on social media. I really hope you enjoyed this video that you have just watched and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye.